that's why we've got to tackle these issues i think is because i mean you don't i don't even realize most places but when you give it a conscious thought how is this accommodating to everyone rarely they are hey guys and welcome back to the skin you're in episode four i think i'm pretty sure um this is callum I don't know, are you on that side for you? I'm on, you're on the side for me, so I'm assuming you'll be fine. Cool. Um, <laughs> um, and today we are going to be talking about body image because that's what we do on this series. <laughs> All right, so I have some questions and we're just going to do them. Cool. Let's All get right. into it. Okay, first question. Do you feel any pressure to look a certain way as a male? Oh, definitely. I'd say um, modern media, I feel like, you know, today's day and age, it's so saturated in content surrounding body image. You have all these celebrities that look this way and everyone's frothing over them. You have, you know, all these actors, actresses, TV shows. It's literally everywhere. Like it surrounds us in everyday life. And I feel like that definitely does reflect on people's view of themselves and how they take uh, life as it comes so definitely yeah as a male obviously there are certain aspects that you can't really control I feel like everyone sort of has those mental demons I'd say saying you don't look a certain way and that's not good yeah um but definitely yeah I find media uh media plays a huge part in accelerating that and definitely as a male you know, I'd look at a poster in the city. I'm just minding my own business. And there's some model looking so fantastic. And then I can't help but compare myself. I feel like that's what we do as humans. We compare ourselves to other people. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, media media is kind of a bitch like that. Um, what pressures do you feel? Like what what is it that you feel you like you you should be looking like? Like like you said, you're comparing yourself to these, you know gorgeous people on posters what is it that you're pressured to look like if that makes sense yeah so I feel like I don't know society has this image of the ideal man and the ideal woman and they're both skinny they're both tan they're both looking exceptionally conventionally attractive I'd say you know you have the man with the six-pack abs and the huge muscles and the woman who's got the you know razor thin waist and you know I feel like that's what society has sort of made the ideal image which is when you think about it really messed up but um yeah so I feel like my size and I feel like the way that I act around other people my personality that's just sort of you know yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh god I'm awful at wrapping up my sentences no that's okay the next question is how has your personal experience been with body image Oh, that's a journey, that one. Um, I mean, yeah, definitely for me personally, it's been a huge part of my life. Growing up, um, I was bullied for my size. I struggled with eating, struggled with exercising, struggled with, you know, a simple PE class at school. That would be difficult for me and I'd instantly put myself down and look at myself negatively just because I couldn't do something that the other kids could do. You know, going back to that comparing thing. I'm surrounded by kids in my class who are fit. But if I can't do that, then instantly I feel bad about myself. Um, And I find even recently, like it's only in recent years that we've had more representation in the media and you are seeing bigger bodies. We're seeing human bodies. Everyone looks different. Um, But growing up, there was none of that. There was nothing that I could see that said, you know, it's okay if you can't do this. It's okay if you look like this. It's okay if you're different to other people and so yeah growing up definitely it was a huge issue for me the intentions that they would have had trying to get everyone to do their best didn't translate as well in the way that they spoke in their actions and words what are your thoughts on skinny privilege skinny privilege i think it definitely exists um seeing the way that my friends are treated compared to me in everyday life you wouldn't expect it but i mean Some people will hold the door open for my skinny friends, but other friends that I have that are plus size, they've never had someone open a door for them or hold a door open. Something as simple as that. I see all these stories online of people sharing 
their day-to-day life and how differently they're treated. People who have gone through weight loss journeys but realise that now that they're skinny, people are so much nicer to them. And it makes me wonder, like, is that the media playing part again? Is this how we view plus-size people, people that are normal? Yeah. Like, it's such a shock. So I definitely think skinny privilege does exist. If you are skinny, society is going to treat you better, is going to favour you in certain ways. But also, it's a reminder that if your body isn't picture perfect skinny as the media portrays it, that doesn't make you any less of a person. Yeah, definitely. But that, that's interesting, um, talking about society. And I think um, going on skinny privilege, you also have, I, th- I think, the part which people forget about. I know I certainly forget about it, which is the whole finding clothes and stuff that fit you. I don't know if you... Oh, yeah. Like, do you have, do you have problems with that? Definitely. I mean accessibility to plus sizes i mean even recently i think dangerfield they just got rid of their entire plus size range and the outburst was huge you're kidding so it makes it makes you wonder like why aren't we in 2022 i know i hate saying that because you know in this day and age but like why aren't we accommodating to bodies that are human that are normal that's crazy i thought dangerfield was cool man me too and i really liked a shirt and then like a day later it was like Our plus size range is, you know, out of stock everywhere. And everyone's like, what's going on? And there was a huge outcry. There should be. There should be. I'm glad. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think definitely it is harder to find clothes as a bigger person. But even people who aren't as big as me, it's still difficult. Why aren't we accommodating to human sizes? And it's insane because the market's there. It is. And you wonder why people don't buy into that. And they're like, we can get rich off of this. But... No. Yeah, take a look at Kmart. I mean, they'll have their graphic T-shirts and their plain T-shirts and whatnot. You can find your plain T-shirts in your four or five, six XLs, but a graphic tee with your favourite band, with your favourite cartoon character, hard to find. They don't really accommodate that. Really? Like even It's like, like they're not... I don't know if it's just popular with plus-size people or they just don't order Seattle. stock. There's like, they don't order stock. I see a shirt I really like. I go to the back to try and find my size, but it's gone. It's either they didn't order it, they didn't have enough, or they're just, you know, it's really popular, which I doubt it's that. That's why we've got to tackle these issues, I think, is because, I mean, you don't, I don't even realise most places, but when you give it a conscious thought, how is this accommodating to everyone? Rarely, they are. Yeah. And I suppose you some things you can give a little bit of slack in a way because like it's hard to be accommodating for everyone you know like places like Dangerfield it's not for everyone like not everyone's style is Dangerfield however obviously you're still going to have people in plus size that is their style what do you think the difference is between male and female society pressures when it comes to body image oh wow that's a pretty loaded question um I definitely think there is pressure on both men and women um In my experience, I would say that I've observed that women definitely get it a lot harder. There's a lot more pressure on women to look a certain way. You know, big thighs, big waist, you know, skinny, sorry, skinny waist, big ass, big boobs. Like that's just, you know, you have people like Kim Kardashian, all these other celebrities, singers, whatnot, who are petite. They're tiny, they're skinny, and people look up to them because they're so famous. And I definitely think that that does put pressure on women to look a certain way. I can't be famous if I look this way, which is why I admire Lizzo a lot um, because she's so open with her body image. She's successful. She looks how she does. There's nothing wrong with that. She's able to be successful and live her life as a larger plus size woman. Um, So it's people like Lizzo, I think, that definitely pave the way for women to realise they don't need to fall um, victim to that pressure. But there definitely is... Um, in my experience a lot more on women for men like I was saying before with the you see a model on some poster on the street on a cover of a magazine or whatnot Um, not to say that men don't suffer issues but I feel like society does definitely um, favour women's bodies looking uh, more appealing and more attractive well interesting on that in terms of celebrities in like that sense from my point of view celebrities in uh for, for males um or or well actually just celebrities in general it's from what i from what i observe you either have to be pretty or funny yes you don't you don't 
you don't get to be anything else. You 100%, obviously, yeah. obviously, the pretty people are very talented, and so are the funny people. But that, like, you have to be obviously talented. In my like, you know, obviously, like, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, you know, like singers and actresses, and like, yeah. In that way, I, you know, they're all gorgeous. But, like, you have these very pretty, talented people, or you have people who are incredibly successful, um, but they're, they're not like I'm. Um, in terms of the people that come to mind um, are Jack Black and Adam Sandler because um, they're yeah. not what society views as like pretty, um, but they're incredibly successful because they're funny. Exactly. And I feel like, I feel like that is a version of, not that they were forced to do that, but that's just sort of the niche that they fit into and that's what society yeah. held on to and you know they hyped that up and that's just sort of how their careers evolved over time but a lot of them i feel like it's you either get to be the pretty one the smart one or the funny one yeah definitely and which is actually I, a really interesting point um and i was just um actually it just came it came to me right then um i've been watching friends um and yeah. i just in talking about pretty funny and smart i just you have ross Chandler and Joey, which is yeah, right there, typecast. Funny, you have, you know, Ross is smart, Joey is pretty, and Chandler's funny. Yeah, I guess, That's well, it. obviously when Friends was made, obviously body image wasn't really a issue at that time, you know? Everyone just well, sort of ate it up and didn't see it as a problem. It was an but, issue, but people just didn't bring it to light yet. That's true. Absolutely. That's what I meant. Yeah. Um, and like I said, only recent years we're seeing those issues. We're calling them out. We're seeing the problem with that sort of content. Um, going back and watching shows that were made so many years ago, you see that that is what people ate up. That was the normal back then. Well, even, even typecasting, you have the whole Joey being the pretty one isn't smart. Yeah, that too. Like, they can't be hand in hand for whatever reason. Ross, Ross and Chandler, being the smart and funny ones, don't get the girls. Yeah. Um, Makes you think. Like, it's it's entirely typecasted and stereotyped around the way they the, they look. Yeah. Um, and the way that, like, it, like I said, they only get one character trait. And for Ross and Chandler, or for like, even, you know, for David and Matthew, it's not, they're, they're not pretty. That's not their character trait. Yeah. Because that's, that's Joey's. He's the pretty one. He's the only one that gets to be pretty. My goodness. You're smart. I wouldn't have even noticed that. But now that you bring then, it up, it's so obvious. And they're in then, front of you. The interesting thing, I think, is that you have, you know, the funny, smart, and pretty one. Then you go to the girls, and they're all pretty. And that's what I was saying. Have, you don't have one, of, there's not one that is not gorgeous. Like Lisa Kudrow, Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, like they're all three are gorgeous women. Yeah, it's like they've gone for the, like I was saying, societal image of the ideal woman. They've just picked two women that look good and run with it. It's always separated. They've always portrayed certain character traits in certain storylines and it, it's harmful. I mean, if you see yourself as someone who's not so smart and then you're seeing the dumb, ugly person on TV, it's that comparison thing again. I feel dumb. I don't feel so smart when I'm working at school. Everyone on TV that is the same is ugly. They're fat. They look like this. And we're, we're you know, taught to view that as negative and it's the comparing thing again. Yeah, I didn't even think about the whole friends comparison until just then. That's actually really interesting. Yeah, I'm actually now that you bring it up. I mean, well, I don't think we really notice it as people, um, unless you give it a conscious thought. Which, yeah. I mean, I guess it's the same with walking into shops, giving it a conscious thought, and you see so much that is right in front of you that you don't really realize. Yeah. Like we were talking about Kmart before, the sizing. If you're a certain size, that's considered average. I don't expect you to realize that there's not a lot of plus size range. You don't have to. But if you have a look, if you go and have a look and yeah. actually delve into those sort of avenues, and you'll realize 
but it's the short end of the stick. I mean, Not there, yeah, yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to say, or have I don't any know. comments? I feel, like on- I, I feel like I covered it all. In terms of how I felt, I mean, growing up, yeah, that was my experience. Of course, it's different for everyone though, um, which makes me curious what other people have to say. Which is so good that you have a series. Um, you get to hear so many different sides of the same story I guess we're all living the same days the same hours the same minutes but how we experience those is different for everyone yeah that's true well thank you so much all right guys thank you um this was good this is good chat um this was Callum thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time bye